In today's video, we're gonna be going over the carry and plant. Right, so when we have a, a new client and we're gonna teach pole drops, this is how we, we go about it. Um, I grab the pole. I always tell people to put their bottom hand on the pink part of the pole. Uh, this is a nice opportunity also to explain to people how to grip the pole, palm, fingers, then thumb, just like that tight grip. You wanna avoid having the pole go diagonally across the palm with a grip like this. This is not as tight, right? You want the tightest grip possible, okay? So nice tight grip, make sure that palm is really pressed against the pole. And we want our left hand mouth level. You're explaining all this to the athlete. Reason being we want left hand mouth level is this is as far as the pole can be from our body. That way we have plenty of room to jump up at takeoff. If your left hand goes any higher and you're gonna move the athlete's hand up like this, you can see and they can see the pole comes a lot closer to them. You're gonna see a huge hit at takeoff. We don't wanna get hit. So always left hand mouth level. Now you're going to instruct the athlete to put the right hand or top hand as high as they can on the pole where they can still see it looking straight ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, that's pretty good. But you can still see it right there. Again, open the hand, tight grip, okay? We always want this left arm straight, right elbow bent position. If we finish the plant like this, awesome, when the pole tip hits the back of the box, hands go up. But a lot of coaches tell athletes to get their hands up before the tip hits the box. If that happens, this happens, and you can hear your shoulders and back, and we don't wanna do that. So always left arm straight, right elbow bent. Now, when we pick up the pole, we're gonna put our right hand down by our hip pocket, lift up our left hand, right? This right elbow is gonna be bent and back, and you want this right hand right at the front of the hip, okay? The left hand, you want the wrist below the hand, elbow below the wrist, left hand center of the chest, Make sure they're pinching their shoulder blades, keep their shoulders back, just like that. This is a really good carry position. And for the pull drops, we always want right leg back, left leg forward, or the opposite for a lefty. And now we're gonna do a one-handed pull drop. Okay, let's go one at a time, guys. You stop. So our athletes will typically do 10 one-handed pull drops. Uh, we'll watch the first three individually and then allow them to do seven on their own pace. And we'll walk around and help athletes that seem to be having trouble. So now we're gonna do a two-handed pull drop, okay? Super important with the two-handed pull drop, our left hand creates distance between us and the pole. Gravity controls the speed of the drop, but what is the right hand do or the top hand? Well, when the pole drops, you can't let the bottom hand drop. So the right hand's actually gonna go up. We're here, you want the right hand to go up to the rib cage like this, okay? Then they're gonna slide their right hand forward to the shoulder, and at this point, there should be a tight grip with both hands, and then they're gonna extend the left arm, right hand going up. Now it's very important, left hand out, right hand up. Unfortunately, what a lot of athletes do is they'll push both hands forward, or they'll go both hands up, which now they won't have space here, or if they push the right hand forward, they lose the tip. And it's super important, even though we want as much distance between our left hand and our body, right? We want that tip as close as possible. So you don't wanna push the right hand forward. So again, with the two-handed pole drops, our athletes will do 10. We'll watch the first three individually and then allow them to do seven on their own. With the two-handed pole drop, you really wanna see that right hand get to the back of the rib cage, in front of the shoulder, and then go straight up. Um, again, make sure they have a tight grip by the time the top hand gets to their shoulder. We wanted to highlight this athlete here in the gray shirt. As you can see, he's doing a great job of getting that right hand to the back of the rib cage, then in front of the shoulder, and then straight up. Awesome. We're gonna do pull runs, all right? Pull runs, we're gonna learn how to run with the pole and plant it, okay? Now, we have green tape down at the 50 foot mark on our runway, so athletes just add 50 feet to whatever approach they wanna do for their pull runs. Some people do a five left. Sometimes with very young beginners will even do a three left approach. And you just do the math for it. So like, let's say someone is running a five and they normally run from 60 feet, they would run from 110 on our runway because the box is at, at 50. Now, whenever we plant the pole, we always want the tip to hit the front of the box and slide in. That allows us to jump, swing, try to clear a bar. If you hit the back of the box, that's bad. Bang, you get hit, you can't swing, you're not gonna clear a bar. And if you were to miss the box, that's really bad. You can get rejected, we don't wanna get rejected, okay? So, super important, you have to decide when to plant the pole. Here, we talk about using our depth perception. Now, you never wanna stare at the box, you wanna look straight, straight ahead and use your peripheral vision. 
Now I'm not super fast, but if I tried to plant this close to the box, I would miss the box. So I would have to plant from further out. And the faster you are, the further out you have to plant from. We do three pull runs with every athlete every single practice. We typically have them run through, but sometimes we do add a jumping component. And if an athlete's having trouble, we may give them a fourth or fifth attempt to work, uh, to work on anything they're having trouble with. This is how we work on the pull carry and plant at Apex Vaulting. Um, hope this helps, and if you have any questions, please email us.